Hey everybody, welcome back to Dragon Age Origins. All right, so time to uh... stop fidgeting. I don't like being out here, Dwin. The mayor's giving me the evil eye. Well, he should, because you're a good-for-nothing liar and a thief. Well, we don't understand why we're out here. We're out here because I say we're going to help these people. And since I pay your wages, you're going to do as I say. Oh, sure, boss. Whatever you say. Right, so I'm going to go into the Chantry here. You know, I'm really not sure what's happening to my frames. I'm not really... <laughs> Sorry, my cat is in my room here and he's like... He wouldn't leave. I think he wants to leave now. One second. He hates it. I, I think I've mentioned this multiple times. He hates it when I'm let's play, because he doesn't like when I'm talking to anything but him. <laughs> Anywho, I wanted to go in here to talk to Caitlyn, because... Evan said you were the one who found him. I can't possibly repay you. Oh! I forgot to get the sword. Oops. <laughs> yep. I'll take a kiss from a pretty girl. You're very sweet. I... I suppose there's no harm in it. <laughs> um... Hi, Morgan! <laughs> I'm just... <laughs> just gonna go for it. Okay, it was just a kiss on the cheek. Enjoy doing that, do you? <laughs> Stay, stay safe tonight, and good luck. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Morgan. <laughs> and obviously not really, as I giggle my face off. <clears throat> um, you know, actually, for oh, I'm not gonna have. Who's my survival for survival person? Because I guess it's not him. Is it Alistair? Because I'm pretty sure that I have Morgan doing the poison, isn't she? Or maybe she is the survival person. Let me double check. Hmm? Wait. I see you going to this, right? No? I actually do not remember how to go into that. Is it oh, wait. Skills? Yes. Okay, who's my survival person? I don't have one, I swear to god. Really? <clears throat> okay then. Let me see here then. That I should probably get, and then I can start focusing on survival. But then, I'm not. See, I've never been able to do this quest in the Brazilian forest that requires like at least survival two, I think, or it might be three. I've been wanting to do it, it's just I never have any character that has that amount of survival skill. So, yeah, that's why I was worried about it. I'm gonna go for that, and... It's just very nice to have the coercion, so, yeah. really needs an offensive spell, so... Like another one. Stroll. How about... Hmm. I'm wondering if I want... An attack that has to be kind of close. Or if I want to go for something that... Has range. You know, something that has short range really isn't a bad thing to have, so there we go. Let me see here. I actually want to see what my infection is standing at with Morgan. Interested. Okay, well, I guess that's something. Anywho! 
sure we're done in the Chantry then. Uh, let's double check. Let's put the journal here and... So we have that, and then we have to take the amulets, find a use for the barrels of oil. Okay, so basically I just need to talk to this dude up here. So I'm pretty sure if I just talk to, I think his name's Sir Perth, <laughs> not dude, um, I think you talked to him about the barrels of oil you collected, and I think that's everything that I need to collect for the battle. So we're pretty much done with uh, preparing for the battle, and yeah. Hi there. The Knights of Redcliffe are ready to fight at your disposal. Have you spoken to the revered mother? Has she offered anything? Okay, Mother Hannah has some holy amulets, but those do. Must we do this? The faith that will protect these men must come from their heart, surely. If they are the same as the symbols worn by their priests, well, that would more than suffice. <laughs> but it's not even magical. <laughs> I do not approve of majory and such. But the symbols of the Chantry are holy and blessed by the Maker, not the work of mages. Hey, you're I will send some to men to collect the amulets. Please give my regards to Mother Hannah for seeing some sense at last. Have you considered using the oil in the village store, you asshole? <laughs> no one told me of this. Oil, you say? How much exactly? Enough to set many monsters aflame. Assuming that would hurt them. Yes, I see what you have in mind. That might be effective, if used carefully. Yes, excellent idea. I'll send some men to collect the oil. We'll use it to slow these creatures down. Have you anything else to ask me in the meantime? Uh, carry on. As you wish, Grey Warden. Make a watch over you. Um, really? Wait, so Morgan approves of using the holy stuff, and Liliana disproves of it. I guess because it's trickery, but even then I just, I guess, thought it would be kind of the opposite. Um, anyway. I'm pretty sure that's everything, so... Let me double check the journal here. Yep. Well, let me double check with Murdoch. And if Murdoch has nothing more to really say or do or anything, then. Yeah. Let me see how close everyone is to leveling up. I'm just curious. Oh, oh look at Morgan. She's what like pretty much about to level up. Alright. Too bad this battle that's going to ensue is pretty continuous to the point that we will The repairs are underway afterward. surprisingly quickly, considering how drunk Owen is. We may just make it. <laughs> um Alright, I think we're pretty much. I have done a good here. feeling about tonight. Alright, I'm gonna see. See if he has anything to say. I can't believe I'm going to fight. That's what I get for mixing myself up in all this. <laughs> well, you've got a bow and arrow, and you know what? You might as well help us defend the place. Anyway, um... I guess I could have just said I'm ready to fight to Murdoch, but oh well. Mother Hannah's amulets have greatly bolstered my men's confidence. You couldn't have armed us with any better than our faith in the Maker. Yeah, because we had to give you physical forms of your faith in the Maker to get you to boost your confidence. Okay. Um... Is there anything else you need? No, nothing comes to mind. If you have not spoken to the Mayor, Murdoch, you should. His militia is far more in need of aid than we are. Alright, um, I guess I have some questions Ask me for you. whatever you wish. 
I want to discuss something else. As you wish. Okay, there we go. That's what I was hoping to get to through conversation was the I'm ready to make my stand here. There is still time before the sun goes down. If you have not yet spoken to Murdoch, or if there is anything you have planned... Pretty sure I'm... Oh, wait, 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 perhaps Good. you're right. So do whatever you must and return before <laughs> I it forgot is the time. sword again! <laughs> I will be here. I was wondering what I had forgotten. Like, I, I was... So, I'm sitting here, I'm like... I forgot where I ended with the video, and then I realized I ended with the conversation. Hold on a second. Oh, that looked like it almost might have been like an interactable object right there. Is that like a chicken head? Statue? Like, what is that? Oh, it's a fish. Okay. I got closer and I could see the kind of scaly fish tail looky thing. <clears throat> Anywho. <laughs> um, yeah. So, walking right in front of these guys firing their arrows. Um... So I need to go retrieve that sword, assuming that it's any better than Alistair's, although even if it isn't... I think this, this was the house, right? Yes. Was there an easy way to it? Yes, there was. Oh well. <laughs> Going. Time to go upstairs. And there's and just the green blade. Alright, let's see here. What am I doing? What am I doing? Okay. Alistair, you're right there. <laughs> okay. Is this actually better for you? It is. Um. That is not what I meant. Alright, but, um, can I remove enchantments or, well, runes, whatever? I suppose something I could do as well. Yeah, you know what, I might as well. And I, st <laughs> I forgot to check if the Rose of Orlay goes to either, uh, Wynn or Liliana or whoever. But, um, I could go to camp, see if I can get Alistair's weapon enchanted, and, uh, yeah. So, since that's something that really doesn't need to be shown on camera, I think I'll go ahead and pause the recording for the moment, get his weapon enchanted, and, yeah. Alright, so I'll see you guys in just a bit. And I get a cutscene. Hey guys. <laughs> um, you can read what she said up there. Subtitles. This is why I do subtitles. <laughs> okay, what did you find? Tis not what I expected. I had hoped for a collection of her spells, a map of the power that she commands. But this is not it. Mm. Yet you look disturbed. Disturbed? Yes, perhaps that is the right word. One thing in particular within her writings disturbs me. Here, in great detail, Flemeth explains the means by which she has survived for centuries. She drinks blood, eats children. That is closer to the truth than you might think. Flemeth has raised many daughters over her long lifetime. There are stories of these many witches of the wilds throughout chastened legend, yet I have never seen a one, and always wondered why not. And now I know. They are all Flemeth. When her body becomes old and wizened, she raises a daughter. And when the time is right, she takes her daughter's body for her own. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure I understand what you mean. Once, 
Flemeth was a mage. This was before the time of the Circle of Magi, but she wielded magical power of the same sort that all the ancient shamans did. It was no different. She summoned a demon and made it part of her, and became an abomination, one that has thrived. Whether Flemeth has always been the demon, or mastered it, or they are one, I truly do not know. No matter what she is, her body still ages and will not sustain her forever, so she must find new bodies. I am to be the next new body in a very long line. Oh shit. Are you certain about this? Indeed. That is primarily what this tome details. The various daughters that Flemeth has acquired. Their preparation and training. I recognize all of it. I am to be her next host. This is my purpose. So why would she risk sending you with me? I do not know. Perhaps tis as she said. The Darkspawn threaten her as much as they threaten anyone else. Or perhaps she believes that this journey will make me more powerful. According to the tome, if the host is already powerful and trained in magic, it takes far less time for Flemeth to settle in. Oh dear. So if you died, she'd have another daughter? Not by any natural means. Perhaps I should take this as a vote of confidence from her on my capabilities? Or perhaps she simply wished me gone from the Kokari Wilds so she could prepare her ritual in peace. A disturbing thought. So is Flemeth immortal or not? Whatever spark of the demon that made her what she is remains within her, keeps her from dying of old age, but her body deteriorates. Eventually, she would be so wizened as to be senseless and immobile. So, she must seek a new body, a fresh body, and start the cycle anew. Can this body be anyone, or must it be a daughter? I am uncertain. According to her writings, certain hosts are better than others. The more a host is prepared, the quicker the transition will be. I am sorry. This simply takes me by surprise. I would have thought I would have had some inkling, some notion. No one thinks the worst of their own mother. Flemeth is no doting mother. She is an abomination and a sorceress, and I should have at least suspected something. So what do you intend to do about it? There is only one possible response to this. Flemeth needs to die. I will not sit about like an empty sack waiting to be filled. Flemeth must be slain, and I need your help to do it. may seem so. If you think of Flemeth as a mother, think of her instead as an ancient abomination that intends to use her own flesh and blood to extend her life beyond all natural limits. She did not wish anyone to get a hold of this information, least of all me. Now I have. If I do not act on what I know, then more the fool am I. Perhaps you should talk to her about it first. I don't think you'd ask her, but for the sake of the let's play, I'll go ahead and perhaps you should talk to her about it first. And what would that do? At best, I would receive pointless reassurances. At worst, Flemeth would imprison me once she became aware I know what I do. I know my mother well enough to be confident she would show no mercy when it came to her own survival. I must do the same. All right. Very well, I'll help you if I can. Then what needs to be done is for you to go back to Flemeth's hut in the Kakari Wilds without me. 
If I am present when she is slain, I cannot be certain that she will not be able to possess my body right then. So I must remain at the camp. Confront her and slay her quickly. I doubt she will truly be dead even then, but it will take her years to find a new host and recover her power, if that is even possible. The thing I must have is her true grimoire. With it, I can defend against her power in the future. Everything else in her hut is yours.